to the newest episode of Picture Shows and Petticoats. I am Jennifer of InWhichIBlog.com. And I'm Elizabeth of MissWizabeth.com. And this is our first episode of our second series. Yay! Yay. And summertime here in Oklahoma. Hot. It's very hot. Very hot. I'm Fanny and myself. We have lemonade. No tea. No hot tea. No. No, no. Well, we thought we would go ahead and talk about our top 10 favorite period dramas because, I don't know, we're kind of in a dry spell right now. There's not anything on PBS for us to watch. It's period. It's period. We have plenty to watch contemporary mystery. Always. Yes. I haven't been watching anything. <sighs> I'm going to pretend like I didn't hear that. I don't, I don't have, even have a clue what's going on. So. I gave Jennifer a little bit of homework to come up with her top 10. And she's peeking right now. I am. I'm, tr I'm trying not to look. Like, I'm really bad, though. I guess we're going to go through this and one of us say what our number 10 is and we'll go so on up to... First of all, I have to say it was very hard. It was very difficult homework. I mean, she really is very demanding of me. <laughs> and uh, narrowing it down to 10 was extremely difficult. So we have a few extra left over that we're going to save for something else special. Yeah. So check out our blogs for that if you haven't already. Um, you're trying not to look at mine too, aren't you? Yes. Have you already looked at it? No. Do you already know what my number one is? <laughs> no. We are starting at 10, right? And we are starting at 10. Countdown. Yeah, we're counting down. Drum so, roll, please. Yes. Okay, do you want to start? No. Okay. <laughs> my number 10 is the 2009 version of Emma. The 2009 version of Emma? Uh-huh. The one that aired on Masterpiece? Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. I really like that one. I mainly because I, I think it was the first, and I don't I don't know how many different productions there are of Emma, but it doesn't have Gwyneth Paltrow in it, so <laughs> it's a little better. I don't have anything really against her. Only that accent's not real. Um, I don't know if the other girls is or not, but um, and I love Mr. Knightley. Oh, I just realized I left something off. Ha! Ah, I'll have to insert okay. something last minute. Okay. Do you want to do it? Do you want to go back? Or? I think I'm going to uh, make an executive d decision to remove one. And replace it with something else. Okay. I knew I was forgetting this, and I you're going to kick me for forgetting. Okay, so that was my number 10. What is your number 10? Well, I, I put... I put the obvious choice, Downton mm -hmm. Abbey, oh. in, in my number 10 slot. Okay. Since we've just finished covering that, I mm -hmm. thought, you know, it's pretty obvious why we love it. Yeah. So. It was wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So, my number nine is the Pride and Prejudice miniseries. Annie. Annie. Annie in mm -hmm. 1995? Yes, 95. I wasn't sure of the year. It, uh, that one took a while to grow on me. I wasn't, um, I'm not a huge fan of it. There are certain the things. The story? Or no, I love the story. The production. the production. Some of the actors, it's some of the actors that bother me. It is not Colin Firth that bothers me. <laughs> That's good. Excellent answer. Yeah. All right, what's your number nine? My number nine, see, and you're not going to like this is the 1996 version of Emma with Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> I know I was sticking my phone. Jeremy Northam. Alan Cunningham. Okay. Oh. See, and I, I like that one because it's a little more comedy than it is Jane Austen. It is. It is a lot of comedy. It's a very different tone. It's mm -hmm. not... It sort of makes you forget it's a period. Yeah. But Don't you it, love her character? Mm -hmm. She's way more outgoing than I am. Mm. That's why I like her. Yeah. I'm a little bit more of a Harriet. <laughs> oh, Jennifer. <laughs> the farmer's good enough for me. Oh, okay. So, number eight? Number eight. Um, this is where I'm using my veto power. Uh-oh. Okay, I did have Pride and Prejudice 2005 down which some people think is, like, really bad. But I love it. I don't have a problem with Keira Knightley. 
I think that the costumes are great. The costumes in that. I love the rain. I love that they get dirty and they're not all running around in pretty little, you know. I like it. I, I love um, Mr. Bennett. He's, I love him. Okay. Um, that's what I did have there, but I am Xing that out for the uh, 96 Sense and Sensibility. Mm -hmm. Classic, quintessential. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Colonel Brandon is Alan my I love him. favorite. <laughs> I love him above Mr. Darcy or anybody else. It's Colonel true. Brandon is. It's I get a little emotional. <laughs> I love it. All right, what's your number eight? Mm, my number eight is Little Dorrit. Mm -hmm. Um, and the first time I saw it on Masterpiece. It was just, I just, it was something to watch, but I got it from the library, and it's like, the more I watch the story, mm -hmm. it's like a flower, it just kind of unfolds. Aww. There's more character layers, it's got really rich content, and I like that a lot. And the acting is wonderful, I love Claire Foy, she's really great, and of course Matthew Fagan mm -hmm. is wonderful. Oh. I gotta be honest with you, I haven't seen that version of it all the way through. You need to do that. I would recommend it. You too. You go see it if you haven't seen it. Number seven is The Young Victoria. The Young Victoria. I don't think I've seen that. Oh. Yeah. You have to see that. <laughs> I just love it. Um, because, I mean, I whenever I think of Queen Victoria, I think of, like, the pictures that you see of her, like, later on in her life. And, um, but I just think it's so sweet showing her falling in love with Albert and, oh. No, it makes me really sad. But, I mean, like, they really, really loved each other. It was wonderful. <laughs> Sorry if I'm doing anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, my number seven is Persuasion, 1995 mm. with Amanda Root and Karen Hines. And it's not... I, I've never really felt like the film is that... You know, it's not a spectacular adaptation. It doesn't mm -hmm. follow the book as much as I would like for it to. But I still love it anyway because it is persuasion. Yeah. Persuasion is really, it's really my favorite Jane Austen story. So yeah. I'm a little bit partial. <laughs> I don't have any productions of that on my list, but I do love it. They need to remake that again. They need to give it another go. Yeah. Why don't you do it? Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so my number six, and we've already talked about it, is Downton Abbey. Yeah. So we can just skip right on to your number six. Just go right on. It's so good it goes without saying. Yeah. My number six is 1995 Sense and Sensibility with Emma Thompson. Mm -hmm. so. And Ellen Rickman. Ah! My number five is Mrs. Dalloway. Mm -hmm. seen it. Okay, I am loaning it to you. I have it. You're taking it home. I warned her before we started that my list was very unoriginal, very predictable. So, I'm glad she's got some things on it that I haven't seen. Mm, yeah. So, what's great about it? Um, the flowers, the love story, the parties, um, the hair. Like the hair. The story is just really good, though. It's there. There are some amazing lines from that. I mean, it, they're in the book too. Um, but they're yeah. Five is for me is um, 1995 Pride and Prejudice A and E miniseries with mm -hmm. Colin Firth, and um, I I feel the same way you do about it's you know being torn between the A and E miniseries mm -hmm. and the the movie with Kira Knightley, but. The, on, the only things that I love about the movie with Keira Knightley are well, Matthew McFadden mm -hmm. and the color and the cinematography and the way they used music. Those were, it was production elements that mm -hmm. were missing from the A&E series, but the A&E series was truer to the story. Right. And I felt like much truer to the characters, which is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. So I have to you know, pick mm -hmm. them out. They're sort of a guilty pleasure for me to watch the movie. Yeah. Well, maybe at some point in the future we can, like, 
do a, an episode over the, the two. Absolutely. It would be great. Okay, my number uh, four is, and I think this is probably going to be one of those ones where you're just like, what? Uh, the Tenant of Wildfell Hall. The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I know. It's like really depressing. And, yeah. um, but I love it. I, you've got everything. I mean, drug use, right? There's drug use. Um, which is, you know, I'm a Breaking Bad fan, so love the drug use. Um, uh, she leaves her husband, which at that time was... Just uh, yeah, after he's raped her a few times. Right yeah. after that, and she finds what's his? I can't remember his name. That guy at the end, you know, who's there, and he just doesn't care, which is also a very odd thing for the time. I mean, she's a little, well, you know, she's been through the ringer. Yes, she and knows. she has a child, yes. and so good for him. So, are, do, you, do you like that one? <laughs> it's not on my top ten. No, but it's very intense. Yes, very realish. Um, my number four is 2003 Pollyanna with Amanda Burton, set in England. I absolutely adore it. I haven't seen that. <gasps> and I don't even think I knew that it existed. Pollyanna? Pollyanna. Set in England. Is it which is not written. It's, yeah, this is what I'm saying. It's written set in the South in the yeah. United States. But wow. That was That's what surprised different. me. Was that, and then I feel like it's just, it's just beautifully, the story is what, is what jumps out. It's, it's just understated and precious, hmm. and I love it. I will have to check that out. Please do. With you on my radar. Absolutely fabulous. You'll love the hair. The yeah. hair, there's a hair scene. I love hair. This is like my hair, my person that I turn to for, you know, hair things. Um, my number three is Somewhere in Time. Haven't seen that one. Another one I'm sitting you home with. <laughs> um, Christopher Reeve, mm -hmm. Superman, Jane Seymour. Oh. She has the most glorious hair. I think that's the whole reason I started watching Dr. Quinn back in the day. Mm -hmm. Dr. Quinn. But, you know, there's time travel. Um... So he like starts out in the 70s, the late 70s, travels back to uh, 1900s something. Gotcha. It's just lovely. Christopher Plummer's in it. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sold. Let's yeah. do this. It's good. My number three is Enchanted April 1992. Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, well, one of, one of my favorite things about this film is of all of the films that have been adapted, books mm -hmm. and I've actually read the books and um, this one I think is the truest adaptation it's just pretty much verbatim and it's I love it I've never seen that or read it <gasps> okay. we'll see it and then read it that's okay. a, that's a, a, yeah number two north and south I haven't seen that one <laughs> I haven't. what wait a minute is it the one with um Richard Armitage no, who am I thinking of? Oh my um, goodness gracious! I'm thinking of Patrick Swayze. No, no, Di different that's thing. A di that's a different. <laughs> it's about like industrialism and like the North and the South. So like the South being the southern part of England, where London's located, yeah. the society and everything. So not the, Civil the War. North, where like all the industry is. No, no, no. so much better than the Civil War. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you'll really enjoy it. Two is Wives and Daughters, 1999 mini series with Francesca Annis and Keely Hawes and Justine Waddell. Is that your number one? No. I think my favorite moments in the mini series are I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm about to, so prepare yourself. But the when the squire's son dies. Mm -hmm. Did you get that far? I don't remember it. Okay. I didn't. It's not sticking out of my mind. Because he is so stinking amazing. As I mean, he's Michael Gambone is amazing in anything that he plays in, but this one just sort of put me over the moon with him because of how he responds in his grief. He's lost his wife, he's lost his son, mm -hmm. and and then she's just there. She's just faithful and devoted and there's nothing in it for her and 
I'll stop talking about it now. Okay. It's really I'll good. have to look it up. It's I think it's on Netflix. I'll watch it. Okay, my number one. This is not your number one, I'm sure. The Age of Innocence. Age of Innocence. Allison has not seen that. <laughs> Jennifer's going home with a stack of movies today. I have more homework to do. <laughs> and so what's good about it? Daniel Day Lewis. All my like number ones for most of these movies. The male lead. Well that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, so um the story is great. It's one of my favorite books. I love it. So I've read the book. Oh yeah. It's, it's adapted. Edith Wharton. I love it to pieces. Basically, Newland Archer is engaged to be married to Mae Welland. May has this beautiful cousin that Newland knew whenever he was younger. The engagement, you know, everything starts to, you know, transpire there. And then Countess Olenska, who is played by Michelle Pfeiffer, comes back into the picture and he's like totally in love with her. And anyway, they're fighting all these feelings while they're, he's engaged. And anyway, they don't act on any of it. And then he ends up getting married and he, oh, it's really, it's tragic. It's tragic. Is it sad at the end? I don't do sad. That's one of my rules. I don't do sad. It's just bittersweet like life. It's not sad. It's not sad. Because I like to look at it like anything could have happened after the last page of the book. Or the closing scene. I like to think that, anyway. I don't always happy in these. Okay, sorry. It's your number one. You're it's allowed. my number one. <laughs> well, it was really hard for me to rank these, so mm. I love them all, but my number one was Cranford. Um, please do not ever watch the sequel. It was so bad. You, you will hurt yourself, but you must see the original, the 2007 miniseries. It's one masterpiece. It was absolutely fabulous. It was really good. Really, really wonderful. The end, I just bawled. I bawled and bawled and bawled. But it was bittersweet too. And I, I survived it, so it was good. Oh, it was a really good one. I should watch that again. I haven't watched it in a long time. Mm -hmm. And I see, I, I have Crane for that there to read. You haven't read it? No, I have not read it either. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. That was our top 10. We would love to know what your top 10 are. I've had this book for a really long time, Jane Austen's Guide to Dating. I kind of figured that the people who watch this vidcast might be interested in it. It's by Lauren Henderson. Um, I haven't read it in a long time, but it's kind of interesting. And she really just compares various dating styles and uh, personalities to characters from Jane Austen's novels. There are some quizzes in the back where you can find out which Jane Austen character you are and which one your man is. I've taken it before. I'm somewhere between a Jane and Elizabeth, which I'm okay with, but I definitely think I'm more of a Jane. I think Jennifer here is an Anne, but we're not entirely sure. And you might be interested in it if you like this podcast, definitely. Um, is uh, you know geared towards someone who knows a little bit about the books. You're not going to pick this up if you don't know anything about the characters. So, um, I think in the coming weeks we're probably going to be reporting a few more of these. Uh, we still have to discuss Jane Eyre, which is coming. We may have a little surprise guest in the coming weeks as well. So we'll see about that. If you want to find us, we are on Twitter, and we really do appreciate all the tweets and stuff. We actually have a lot recently okay. talking about our top 10 stuff. So um, we're on there at PS Petticoats, and you can follow us there. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find us on Facebook. We're everywhere. So I guess we will just see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> okay, cut.
great because my number 10 is one that I really can't talk a lot about. I don't, I can't, I can't speak educatedly about it. <laughs> It's not a word. Does it have Colin Firth in it? No. Nope. I can't talk, I can't be composed when I talk about him. Well, I understand. No. That's just that's really good. <laughs> you do show don't tell really well. Do I? I just say that's. I, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> you should let me act in something. Just do it. <laughs> okay. I'll write a character just for you. Okay, then. How about that?